Interviews at other colleges I'd had were very formal. It kind of almost felt like I was just going to be another student in their number. But when I spoke to Heidi and Kirsty here, they seemed really interested in me as a person, as well as like me finding out about their course. If you want to be challenged and shaped theologically, if you want to grow in your faith and your understanding of who God is, um, then I'd highly recommend doing some theological study here at NTC. The way I started is not how I am today, which is something I achieved here at the NTC. The, the academic side of the course really, really uh, scared me at first, but each step was taken with the support of staff, which I found really encouraging. The lectures I found amazing, though they challenged many of my preconceived ideas and completely took me out of my comfort zone. You know, I'm in my forties and uh, I just fit right in. Felt really comfortable. Uh, I felt really welcome here. There was really um, a sense of care and uh, people really cared for each other. And I just felt so at home the minute I walked onto campus. An NTC has really changed my life for the best. The moment we arrived, people were telling us how glad they were that we had come and making us feel welcome. We worship together, when, especially when we are in the chapel. We sit together and like we look like one family. Heidi Wright. The first term especially, ringing her up in tears because I'd just been so ill and she just sorted it all out and she was just like an angel, she just came at the right time. It was the first place that I looked at that all the module options, I was genuinely like very happy to do any of those um, and was sort of like, they all seem really interesting and I would find it hard to pick between them so I wanted to do them all. It's a really supportive space where they are willing to work with you wherever you're coming in at and everyone genuinely wants the best for you. One of the things that I loved here is there's so much freedom to explore aspects of the faith that particularly intrigue you. Was I'd get to study with, alongside friends um, and then I'd get to come back to work and kind of apply what I'd learned straight away. One of the things they were talking about here is that uh, if you don't have a PhD, then you can't teach in university. So I thank God for NTC and for helping me acquire my, my PhD. And they told me about NTC. They spoke very highly about this place and rightly so. Now that I've been here for a year, I know why. And I guess I was able to finish my degree with the help of the scholarship that this college provides. And yeah, I will be graduating next month. <laughs> NTC is uh, very much uh, values uh, like a spirituality. This is not just like a secular college or a university. They try to uh, equip us uh, like a holistic way. Teachers here, I think they always give a double portion in return, which is one of the most special things about this place is the, the staff. It is hugely enriching. Uh, it's fun and yet rigorous in its academic learning and has helped my practice as well in terms of everything that I'm able to do and how I'm able to serve and adapt my learning and, and practice. College equips us to do ministry in the world and not just in the church on a Sunday morning. I think I've been able to work cross-denominational, cross-faith and uh, across the world with different people. And I think having those strong basic foundations of where my faith lies and my theology lies, I think it's been helpful to engage with other people.
may be seated. Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to this service of worship and celebration. Today, we are gathering to mark the significant achievements of our students who have made it this far, and we are delighted for them. And thank you so much for braving the wilds of a storm to get here to celebrate with them. Today, it's a joy to see so many family and friends. We have some particular apologies that I wanted to note at the beginning because it touches on your program a bit. Some of our faculty members had train cancellations, and so they've not been able to get here. So at different points in the program, you'll see the wrong person standing. Just tolerate it. It's okay. Uh, we know where they are, and they're watching online. And our love and affection goes out to all those who couldn't quite get here. But for those of you who are here, it's a real joy to see so many family and friends, and a particular welcome to Lord Keith Bradley, who's made the effort to come out, and Professor David Law, who represents the University of Manchester. Thank you so much for taking time to join us today. Very shortly, we're going to sing together a hymn of the church, but first I wanted to bring three things to your attention. In a very housekeeping way, if there is a fire alarm, it's not planned. So please leave and go out to the quadrangle, which is that direction, back where you came from, really. We're also really delighted to have children amongst us today. It's so lovely that your children are here to watch you. We have some babies, I think the youngest, record holder this year is four weeks old, which is just a joy. But we do know that sometimes babies cry or you need just a bit of space. There's a room set aside for children downstairs. But here's the thing. We are a community that loves everyone and we really want the children to be a part of graduation. So if you need to step out, that's fine, feel free. But please do come back for the graduation ceremony itself where even the youngest eyes can see the ceremony and the hooding and the celebrate their parents' achievement. And then lastly, you are more than welcome to take photos throughout. You're even able to tweet, go for it. But please make sure your mobile phones are on silent, if that's all right. So you're welcome to take pictures of the people you love. In fact, we warmly encourage you to do that, but just make sure your mobiles are off. So, friends, family, students, as we celebrate together, we do so in a context of worship because that's who we are. And so we're going to stand and sing a hymn of celebration together. Please join me in standing. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Come, Lord, come. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come among us. Be present in this place. Come, Lord, come. Come as we gather to worship. Fill our hearts with praises. Fill our lives with gladness. Strengthen in us the desire to serve you and others for your glory. Come, Lord, come. Come as we gather to celebrate families and friends, students, staff and faculty together, recognising the results of much hard work, rejoicing in achievement and success. Come, Lord, come, our holy, gracious, and life-changing God. We delight today in your presence, for you rejoice in our rejoicing. You celebrate with our celebration. You share the joy and gladness of your people and all we achieve through your strength and grace. So bless us now with an awareness of your presence. Bless us through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus who saves us. Bless us through the transforming power of your spirit in our heart and lives. Come, Lord, come. Amen. The first lesson comes from Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day, pours forth speech, and night to night, declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and all their words the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant for also from the insolent. Do not let me have, do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. O oh Lord, my rock and my Redeemer. 
this is the word of the Lord. We're going to sing together a song which I think captures the story of some of our graduating students today. A God who has made a way, a God who has kept his promises. So would you stand with me as we sing Waymaker, the words of which are on the bottom of page two. Sarah and Sakani will lead us. Let's stand.
sin comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. This is the word of the Lord. Well, over the last few years, we've taken time in our services to share a little bit about the story and the vision of the college. We are 79 years old this year, which is quite old, and we're approaching a big birthday. I sometimes wonder on reflection what our founders would have made of us. I'm not sure they could have imagined who we are today in the breadth, the depth, the places people come from, the worlds that they've inhabited. Wow, it's been quite a journey. But you don't really always want to hear from me about the journey. And so this year, we've asked three students to come and to briefly give you a snapshot of what it means to be part of NTC. And so I'm going to ask all three of them to make their way to the platform. And one after another, you're going to hear from Graham, then Ebenezer, then Sharon, a little bit about what it means to be a part of our story. So please come. Hi everybody, my name's Graham. I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to all the NTC staff and faculty members for their support over the last three years. I would also like to thank my friends and family for being here today to be part of this special graduation ceremony. Congratulations to all the other graduates. If anyone had told me 10 years ago I would be standing here in front of you all, wonderful people today, sharing about my journey at NTC, having now completed my degree, I would not have believed you. I thank God for ordering my steps, directing my path, and I give Jesus all the glory. I am originally from Wakefield and come from a background in hospitality. When I was 15 years old, I said to my teacher I wanted to be a chef, so they sent me to a cafe called Othello's for my schoolwork experience. This led to a job there and later became a very significant part of my journey. I became great friends with the family who owned the cafe, and those friends are here today. I would like to publicly thank you for everything that you have done for me and my family. Some years later, through a miracle encounter, my wife and I connected with a Christian charity based here in Manchester called the Message Trust, where they help people have a second chance in life through discipleship, job training and practical life skills. My family and I moved to Manchester and used our experience in hospitality to support the charity's ongoing work. This God-given opportunity inspired us to pursue a full-time commitment in ministry. My wife, Catherine, started at Nazarene Theological College a year before me, and although hard work, I witnessed the transformation in her life. After a lot of prayer, I decided to follow suit we took the practical theology pathway. Catherine's work placement with the Antioch Network later led to a start in a church here in the city of Manchester. And I'm pleased to say it is thriving, praise God. Having now gained the necessary theological and practical experience from NTC, as a family, we are now preparing for overseas missions with Mission Direct. We will be heading to the Dominican Republic in January to help lead missionary teams and assist with projects such as building schools, education, healthcare, and job training, sharing the love of Jesus everywhere we go. Our time at Nazarene Theological College has quite literally changed the direction of our lives. We hope now being equipped to help others. And finally, I'm honored to dedicate this moment to someone who has been the biggest support throughout my life, my amazing mum. 
My mum has made countless sacrifices over the years for her children. She put her dreams and desires on hold to prioritise ours. She instilled in me and my brother the values of hard work, perseverance and being non-judgmental of others. My degree is not just a testament to my hard work, but is a symbol of the love of my family. As we go on our new journeys and explore uncharted territories, let us remember the people who have made our success possible, the ones who have sacrificed, cheered us on, and believed in us when we sometimes doubted ourselves. Thank you, Mum. Today, I dedicate this degree to you with all my love and gratitude. My journey to NTC was like that of Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, whom God ordered to move from known to unknown. Abraham lived the feasible to the, for the invisible. Live the reality for the unrealistic. God, how, how will I go about this? I never, I never heard anything about NTC before. Neither have I read anything about Nazarene Theological College, but go. Because of my situation and my predicament, if I want to go to any school in UK, who will pay? How will I pay the, the tuition fee? We were moving around the thank God I have a fantastic family. I've got the support of my wife and my kids. We were moving around the neighborhood in this bury, and I saw the only thing I can see is the, the signpost. I said, yes, Ebenezer, you belong here. We went to the park at Ditsbury, went back to our place. Two days after, I just dressed, I got up. My wife said, where are you, where are you going? I said, I need to trace that school. I went to the school, no application online, and I was fortunate to meet a walking angel, Reverend Jacob Lett. My name is Ebenezer. I am so so so. I don't have money. I need to come to school. I am from so so so. This is my predicament. This is what I have faced. This. Jacob said, I am also new here. But I think you belong here. I will take up and I will discuss your matter with the principal officers of the school and the school board. And here I am today. NTC is not just a school. NTC has taught me the, the lesson of all life, to love God, to love your neighbor, and to love the whole world. The lecturers and the faculty staffs have tried their best, and they will always try, try their best, to, to give an awesome balance between spiritual formation and academic studies, making it unique and stand out from every other secular university. Godliness and academic studies is there, making it unique. Because of the kindness and the love I enjoy in NTC from the lecturers, my colleagues, students, no senior, no junior in NTC, everybody will, even with the lecturers, you'll be talking to your lecturers as if you are talking to your mates. We share tea together, we share cake together, with no, no separate seat for anybody. Because of that, I was arrested 
and I decided, God, if you can give me the opportunity, I want to move my preaching ministry from wherever I might be coming from to the Church of the Nazarene. <laughs> Today, I am worshiping at the Church of the Nazarene with my wife and the kids. As I enjoy the love from the lecturers and the faculty staff and my colleagues, I enjoy it from, from my wife, who told me, my dear, you can do it, go ahead. You will always have my support. When I told her, I don't think I can go to that school again. And I have my God-chosen God parents here. Not really biological, but what they have been doing for us since we have been here is fantastic. I have my reverend here, Reverend Susan Ifiad and the husband. They are here with me. I've enjoyed a lot from every one of you. And my story is changing, loving myself, loving God, loving my neighbor, not loving the whole world. And I know I never regret my coming to NTC. Am I going into the Church of Nazarene? The process of navigating it fully, my reverend and the board are on it. Thank you. It's a good thing to be here. Earning a master's degree was once just a distant dream for a girl like me. But today, as I proudly wear this elegant academic regalia, it's a testament that God listens and dreams can become a reality. As I stand here, I'm filled with deep gratitude to God and TC and my church for granting me the opportunity to realize this dream. When I look back at my time at NTC, I see it as a place where I have had a transformative learning experience. It wasn't just a center for learning, but a nurturing space where I uncovered my own unique voice and learned the power of self-expression. And TC helped me not only gain academic knowledge, but also gave me the chance to engage in meaningful dialogue, share my thoughts, and truly find my own voice among the many ideas. It's here that I understood learning is not just about the accumulation of various theologies, ideologies, or philosophies, but it's about realizing our potential to contribute to knowledge as a whole. And for that, I'll always be thankful. A subtle yet striking characteristic about NTC and its community that has been a source of deep inspiration for me is their profound commitment to embodying Christ-like humility and a spirit of servanthood. I have witnessed people, regardless of their roles or positions in the community, conduct themselves with genuine modesty and a sincere desire to prioritize the needs and well-being of others. This has deeply impacted me and taught me how I am to live out my calling, which is to serve reverently. As I reflect back, I realize that NTC for me has not only been an institution of learning, but a profound school of character and value, shaping not only my knowledge, but also my heart. With the theme of this graduation being our story, your story, I'm acutely aware that my story doesn't conclude with this ceremony. In fact, it has just begun. And as I embark on the path ahead, carrying the lessons and experiences from my one-year journey here, I'm committed to living my story in a manner that makes it a compelling and worthwhile read for all. Thank you. Thank you. Well, in anticipation of what they might say, I imagined that I would find them inspiring and humbling and eye-opening, and that's true. The college exists to serve men and women around the world as a college of second chances, of new hope, of opportunity, of deepening vision, and of allowing achievements to be possible that people wouldn't have imagined for themselves except that they encounter God who calls them into study. And so, as you gather here like this, if their stories intrigue you, they're multiplied by every student here. So chat with them, learn their stories, because their stories shape us and as we've shaped them. 
And some of you, of course, know the story. You know where your friends and your family have come from and where they're going to. But there's this unpredictableness about how God encounters people and calls them into learning. And where they go next, we can't wait to see. So as you know, every time we talk like this, we also ask you if you'll support us. Support us in prayer. Come join us in study. If you never imagined you could study, it truly is possible. Come and deepen your faith and your understanding. Join us in supporting the Friends of NTC. But above all, know this, that in these 79 years of unimaginable changes, God's been so faithful in provision to us. And part of that faithfulness is expressed today in the people here. So as they parade across the stage, and you see our beaming faces celebrating with them, and as you celebrate with them, please understand that their story is our story, and their story continues touching the world for the sake of Christ. Thank you so much for listening today. Your story and ours weave together, and we are supported in so many ways. But one of the things I was thinking about as I walked up here, as you were looking that way at us marching up, that without a body of people here, this would be a very silent ceremony. But you're here to share in the joy, to rejoice with us. And for that, we are truly grateful. Continue to give glory to God in light of everything that we've heard and prayed so far in this ceremony. So let's stand together as we sing How Great the Chasm, again on page two of your running order. Jesus Christ, my Lord. 
city. Let's pray together. Good and loving God, we thank you for giving us the opportunity, all of us, to play a part in the lives of our students and our new graduates. We're grateful to you for your guidance and love as we shared in this important work. Please bless and guide our graduates as they reach this end and as they chart new beginnings. May what they have learned by being with us allow them to truly be those who live, whose lives face outwards towards others and towards you. May what we have learned from them enable us to be people who are the same. Please help them to use all that they have learned in their studies to make the world a better place, to serve others in true solidarity and kinship, to seek ways to help the poor, the marginalised, and those who are suffering, and to always seek the greater good, and to reflect you in all they do. We know that for some, the journey from here will see them experience pain and hardship. And some of them have already experienced this. Lord, we ask you to grant them solace and strength as you walk alongside them through the rest of their lives. Lord God, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to build our community with each of these special and unique individuals while they've studied with us. Through this part of their learning, though this part of their learning journey is now completed, we know that they'll always be with us as part of the extended NTC community. And we ask that the bonds they, that have been created here remain strong despite any distance. We ask all of this in your name and in the name of your son. Amen. Well, it's an absolute joy for me to introduce our speaker for today, who is Dr. Andrew Ollerton. He's a theologian, he has a pastor's heart, he's an amazing communicator who makes very complex ideas really relevant and engaging. He works partly with the Bible Society and he has developed a lot of videos and resources around the Bible. And in particular, he is just a warm, a hearted, kind man who's a really good friend. He's married to Charlotte. They have children, three of them, all in secondary school. So he feels the pain of parenting in the 21st century, as well as its joy. They have various pets, but alongside all of that, he's a faithful leader. He's been a friend of the colleges for many years now, and his passion for learning and communicating the Bible is really infectious. And I look forward to hearing what you have to say to us today, Andrew. Thank you. Well, good morning. Um, thank you, Deirdre, for that really generous welcome. It's great to be here. I'm really wonderful to celebrate with all of you who are graduating. One or two of you who many years ago I actually taught uh, a couple of modules and in spite of that you still are graduating. So well done. Uh, hats off to you quite literally today. And uh, it's a real privilege just to share a couple of thoughts for you, particularly you know, with you graduates in mind, whatever you go on to do beyond this moment that we're celebrating with you today. But actually for all of us, just a couple of simple things I want to uh, pu push into you, one in, in the right ear, one in the left ear. Uh, the first is, don't ever lose the wonder. And the second is, don't conform with the culture. And they're based on those words from Romans 12 that have been read to us, uh, where Paul says these words, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice to him. You notice that phrase, in view of God's mercy. And that's really what I had in mind when I say, don't ever lose the wonder. You know, today is one of those mountaintop moments, isn't it, in your life. Uh, we don't tend to live on the summits of mountains, but we can always remember what the view was like when we were there. And in the same way, you know, these moments are to fuel the wonder of where God's got you to. The wonder of who you used to be and what you're now becoming. Never lose the wonder of that. Earlier in the letter of Romans that these words are from, Paul has 
started way back down, if you like, down in the depths of the valley that we used to live in. A valley of sin, a valley of shame, a valley of regret and of entrapment, a valley where we were enslaved to all sorts of things that had the better of us. But now, he says, in view of God's mercy, look now where you are. Isn't it incredible? We just heard even those three stories where each one of them, in their own beautiful way, was showing the view of God's mercy. And I urge you, never lose the wonder. Don't lose the beauty of what God has done in your life through Jesus Christ. And for all of us here today, I want to also just urge you to consider the beauty of what God does in ordinary people's lives. What's on display today, and I think this has come through so, so wonderfully, is not elite people who are just better than everyone else. What's on display today is people who've been taken a hold of by some good news that actually makes a difference in our lives. That's what a Christian is. It's not an elite, morally better than everyone else person. It is someone who's discovered a God who is good news for us. And he's at his best when we're at our worst. He is most hopeful when we feel hopeless. And I want to urge any of us here today who may feel, despite dressing up in our best, coming out today, inwardly we feel a measure of hopelessness. Do not despair. Let these stories you're hearing fuel the thought in your own mind that if God can do it for people like us, he can do it for you. It's his grace that brings hope into our lives. And so Paul says, therefore, you know, it's, it's a turning moment in the letter. It's saying, in the light of this incredible revelation that you've received, in the light of the privilege of what God has done for you, what are you going to do now? How now will you live in response to the amazing grace of Jesus Christ? Well, the first thing, as I say, is don't ever lose the wonder. I wonder if you've ever lived in a place um, or perhaps holidayed in a place that just had a, 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 be a beautiful scenery, a natural, it was just naturally beautiful, a place, you know, maybe you live there today, maybe some of you are from Lancashire where my, my, uh, my family, extended family are from, you'll know what I'm talking about, right, a beautiful place and others of you may be from Yorkshire and you won't know what I'm talking about but nevertheless... <laughs> <laughs> I jest. Let, let's, let, uh, after that moment of division, let's reunite because we used to live in Cornwall and I'm sure you can all agree that Cornwall has some natural beauty. And uh, that's where we used to live uh, in Penzance. And I remember we were leading a church after I'd graduated. Uh, we went to lead a, a small little church in Penzance. And on the way home from the building that the church met in, which was actually a secondary school, um, there was this moment where it was up on a hill and there was this moment where you came over the brow of the hill and all of Mount's Bay was in front of you. St. Michael's Mount, the sea, the whole bay, the place that people pay a lot of money to go on holiday and you just suddenly it appears. And the first few times that happens, it was just that jaw-dropping moment of beauty, of wide-eyed wonder at what you were beholding. And yet if you've ever had the privilege of living in a place like that, you'll be surprised, aren't you? You're surprised, aren't you, how quickly it can become something you don't even notice. That actually as you come over the brow of the hill, you're so self-absorbed with the things that have just pleased you. Maybe you think you've done a particularly good thing in the sermon you've just preached in my case. Or maybe you're annoyed at the person that was there or someone who wasn't there or whatever it may be. And it's sudden, suddenly you're so self-absorbed. You've, you, you, you drive over the brow of the hill as if it's just another piece of tarmac. And it's like, it's so easy to become like that, even with the Christian faith. Even these moments can quickly turn to just becoming self-absorbed, can quickly turn to becoming almost unaware of what God has done. I urge you, don't lose the wonder. May you be someone who, even in 10 years' time, still has that jaw-dropping look of wonder in your eyes that you are doing what you're doing, that you've become the people that you've become. Apart from God's grace, it was not going to happen. But by his grace, you are what you are. May you never lose the wonder. May you never lose that deep sense of gratitude. Wherever you serve and wherever you minister, may you minister in view of God's mercy. Amen. Well, that's the first thing. Don't ever lose the wonder. I can remember when I was leading this church, uh, there was a, a gentleman who was older in years and actually, as it turned out, was on his deathbed. I didn't realize that when I first started visiting Headley, his name was. And as I visited Headley, he was where he was because an operation had gone wrong 
in the hospital, and he didn't pull through. But I went to visit him several times before realizing how, how that was playing out. And I can always remember with Headley that um, I used to go in and I'd say to Headley, so how are you doing? And it, it came apparent after maybe the third time that he, he often said the same thing. And it was simply this, these words. He would say, well, I've got much to thank the Lord for. And I remember just being so impacted by that because there was, I, I suppose on reflection, Headley had much to complain about. He had much to feel was unfair or unjust. But what marked him out was this deep gratitude. Whatever life had thrown at Headley, he had never lost the wonder of what God had done for him. And whatever life throws at you, may you never lose the wonder of what Jesus Christ has done for you. May you do everything in view of God's mercy. And then Paul goes on to say, and this is the second thing, that's something to push into your right ear. Here's something for the left ear, uh, and hopefully you'll remember these things as you go forward. But the second thing that Paul would say is, don't ever lose the wonder and don't conform to the culture. In verse 2 of the passage we read, Paul says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. I'm sure your time at NTC has been the renewing of your minds. A transformation that begins in the mind, but as we've heard in every story, works itself out through the practice of people who are now thinking differently about the world. No longer is this world to be thought of as raw material to make as much profit in greedy motive as possible. No, no, this world is a place marked by the beauty of a creator God who loves us and a savior who died for us and our lives have been renewed in thinking. We are here not to be happy and get happy as quickly as we can before we die. We have a hope much bigger than that and we're here to make a difference on planet Earth. Well, I hope that's the renewing of the mind that you've experienced. But as you go forward, I urge you to stay in that zone of for forever learning, continuous learning to renew our minds that we might think and act like Jesus Christ. Again, um, going back to those Cornwall years, as well as that beautiful view, obviously what Cornwall is marked by is beaches. And uh, I remember on one occasion with my wife and two friends, we went to a beach and um, as we were, we, we made a pile of our stuff and then we went into the sea. And uh, we were in for quite a long time. It was a nice sunny day. And when we came out, uh, after bodyboarding and playing in the ocean, when we came out, to our horror, someone had stolen all of our stuff. And uh, I remember thinking at the time, what kind of a person steals socks? I mean, my socks in particular. I could understand them taking my phone, but they'd taken everything. And uh, so I went and found the lifeguard and I said, you know, you need to help us because you, you need to call the police. And the lifeguard sort of looked at me knowingly and he said, well, I will call the police in a moment. But before I do, just go and look about 50 yards up the beach that way. And lo and behold, as I walked up the beach, there was all of our stuff. And I, I still didn't get it. I think I had that sort of cold head. And I, I remember thinking, what kind of a person moves all of your stuff, 50? <laughs> but of course, as you, you probably got it before I did, you know, our stuff hadn't moved. But have you ever had that experience where you're in the waters and strong cross currents are at work and you don't realize that all the while you are moving have you ever had this experience and you it's only when you look up that you realize gosh i've lost my bearings where am I? i'm not quite where i thought i was and i think we live we will serve you will go out into the world to serve in a world where there are strong cultural currents at work and it's very easy to drift with the pattern of this world and before we know it we've moved much further than we realized away from our stuff I want to encourage you to hold fast to the stuff that has been revealed in the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. I want to encourage you to hold fast to the stuff that is built on the historic church that has stood the test of centuries. I want to encourage you to hold fast to the stuff that you've been entrusted through the Holy Spirit and not to conform to the pattern of this world. Not to give way to the pressures to be like everyone else and to think like everyone else. You're a Christian. You're different, so act like it, think like it. Step forward with a boldness not to simply drift, but to make a difference in the world precisely because we're not going with the flow. The last thing our world needs right now is Christians just drifting. Our world needs to know that there is an alternative way to be human, marked by generosity and simplicity and kindness and honesty and truth and community, all the wonderful things that we've been entrusted to, and that's going to mean we have to refuse inwardly and then sometimes outwardly as well 
to go with the flow. I love the way that um, many of you will be familiar with Bishop Tom Wright, or N.T. Wright, um, a theologian, former bishop, and uh, he, when at one point there was a particular issue that had been flagged and the church hadn't voted the way that Parliament thought they should, and the, the ex-Prime Minister, as he is now, David Cameron, famously said in Parliament, when is the church going to get with the programme? Um, and uh, you notice the, 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 behind that statement is a clear intention. There is a programme that we are meant to get with. And I love the way that uh, Tom Wright replied in a letter that he wrote in the newspaper. He said this, The early Christians got a reputation for believing all sorts of ridiculous things, such as humility, chastity, and the resurrection, standing up for the poor, and giving slaves equal status with the free, for valuing women more highly than anyone else had ever done. People thought them crazy in the Roman Empire, but they stuck to their countercultural gospel. If the church had allowed prime ministers to tell them what the program was, it would have sunk without a trace in 50 years. We have the Holy Scriptures to tell us what the program is. And I urge you, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Show a better way to be human without drifting with the culture. Let people see the kindness, the beauty, and the love of God in the way that you live your countercultural life to the glory of Jesus Christ. So in your right ear, I urge you, don't ever lose the wonder of what God has done to get you to this place. Blood has been shed. The Spirit has been poured out. Adoption has happened. All sorts of extraordinary things have happened to you to bring you to this moment. Don't ever lose the wonder And don't conform to the culture, but go and make a tremendous difference in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it brings me joy to announce this year's award winners and the prizes. You've just heard three stories today that are examples of dozens of stories through the years that were only possible because of people's generosities from churches, from individuals, and from organizations. The awards are often given to make these stories possible. In some cases, quite literally, those stories would not have happened had it not been for people's generosities. Additionally, um, they honor individuals who have made significant contributions to the college, to the church, and to the wider community. So if you go to page seven, you will see the list of awards. And you will find there on page seven in your bulletin the details of each of those awards, who they're given by, or the churches and organizations. Many of them are from alumni of the college who want to pass on the joy to those who are students now. You will also notice that the awards are given by certain criteria some for those going into ministry, some into youth work, some who are undergrad, some master, some PhD, some who are international, and so on. So I'll read the list of awards now, and if you'd please restrain your rapturous applause until I'm done reading the list of awards. The British Isles North District NMI Partners and Mission Bursary went to Sakani Chambo, Kieran Thomas, and Lawrence Sarker. The Dave Holtz Youth Ministry Award was given to Josh Bardclay Watt. The Kathleen Allen Award was awarded to Jamie Russ. The Dr. T. W. Schofield Memorial Award was awarded to Anna Freitas. The Dr. Hugh Ray Award was awarded to Bernard Asare. The Worthy Scholarship was awarded to Arano Mokana. The Longsight Church Postgraduate Award was awarded to Sarah Lakrid. The David and Agnes Henson Memorial Award was given to Charlotte Johnson. The Dewsbury Church Fellowship was awarded to Nathan McMullen. The British Isles South District NYI Award to Sakani Chambo. The Nellie Story Bursary was awarded to McDonald Amofo. The Point of Light Award was awarded to Esther Newton. The Bessie Flint Bursary was given to Claire Little, Jacques Jamino, 
and the Suter Charitable Trust Postgraduate Student Fellowship was awarded to Ravi Gopal. The Don and Bonnie Iron Scholarships were awarded to Hingwang Seng, Kengoro Goto, and Kieran Thomas. The Eurasia, Eurasia Regional Scholarships were awarded to Danny Atkins, Sylvia Oosterweg, Jeremy Smith, and Sharon Tiga. The Dr. Bruce Taylor Award was awarded to Samuel Anye Maleche. The John Weatherhill Award was awarded to Darren Matthews. The Pamela Smith Award was awarded to Michael Bradley. The Yedam Church Award was awarded to Dai Sheng In. The McGee Bursary was awarded to Jonathan McDermott. The Dr. Kent E. Brower Award was awarded to Stephen Oliver. The Matthew 633 Award was given to Sabrina Grant Powell. The Thomas Surgeoner Award was awarded to Puya Hamar. And the Progression Bursaries were awarded to Sarah Bayless, Joshua Boston, Hannah Bowen, Lily Cossey, and Esther Newton. If you'd join me in giving the recipients a round of applause. We now come to our prizes, and prizes come with cash. And we know the recipients will use their hard-earned money to buy more theology books. The prizes are awarded for academic excellence, often in particular areas of studies. And not every year are the prizes awarded, sometimes because particular course units are not taught, or sometimes because a student has not met the grade range that's required for that award. Now, there's only a couple of us who know who are the recipients of these. They're held a closely guarded secret. Even the faculty um, don't know. And so we join in celebrating um, the people who've met the criteria and who have worked really hard to do so. And a few people, because this is a secret, um, are not here today to receive these awards. So what I'll do is I'll call your name, and if you do receive the award, just stand up. And in this case, we can clap for each independent uh, recipient. Uh, and then you can sit down and we'll uh, go to the next award. So the Gordon Thomas Prize in Christian Holiness is awarded to Pedro Martins de Freitas. <laughs> the Maynard James Prize in Pastoral Theology is awarded to Sarah Bayless. The Herbert and Jean McGonigal Prize in Church History is awarded to Pedro Martins de Freitas. <laughs> the Tom Finley Prize in New Testament goes to Joshua Boston. The Joseph and Nan Irving Prize in Theology goes to Hannah Bowen. The Brooklyn's Church Prize in Social Theology goes to Hu Jones. The Jack Ford Prize in Old Testament goes to Joshua Boston. This prize was given in memory of Dr. Jack Ford, and I believe his daughter Pauline is here with us today. It's lovely to have you here. The Alan Longworth Prize in Wesley Studies goes to Pedro Martins de Freitas. I think Pedro will be taking me for dinner this evening. <laughs> the 
The Dave Holtz Prize in Youth and Community is awarded to Stephen Francis, who unfortunately isn't with us today, but we can still clap. The Yedam Church Prize in Biblical Studies is awarded to Lei Ji Lang. The Reverend and Mrs. William Kelly Prize in Mission Studies is awarded to Jesse, Jessica Craig. And this year we have a new uh, prize called the Shalom Prize. And this is given to the graduating undergraduate student who has shown the greatest improvement between the first and final year. And this year's first recipient is Bryce Moore. Bryce apparently had a more important event, as is his wedding, to attend instead of his graduation. And now we come to our most prized prizes, the two college prizes. The first one is given to the undergraduate student with the highest grade point average. And this year's recipient is Bryce Moore. And finally, the second college prize goes to the graduating MA student with the highest grade point average. And this year's recipient is Hans Nyman. If you've received a prize, find me afterwards and I will distribute. Um, and once again, let's give everyone a round of applause. We now come to the graduation ceremony itself. This ceremony marks the close of the college's 79th year. These graduates follow some 1,400 students who have graduated before them over those years. Would all the graduates please stand? I'll ask our principal. Principal Brower Latz, Professor Law, may I present to you the graduates of 2023 for graduation from their respective courses of study at Nazarene Theological College, Manchester. Most are here in person, others are unable to attend. I confirm that these graduates have fulfilled the requirements for the awards as stipulated in the academic regulations of Nazarene Theological College and the University of Manchester have satisfied the examiners and have been approved by the unanimous vote of the academic board of Nazarene Theological College. Well, hello everyone. On behalf of the University of Manchester, I congratulate those graduating today. Today we're celebrating the culmination of years of intensive and extensive reading, years of struggling with profound and often difficult ideas, years of honing your writing skills, and most important of all, years of deepening your theological knowledge and insight. It is a great pleasure for me on behalf of the University of Manchester to be able to acknowledge all this hard work today. 1992 saw the first students from Nazarene Theological College graduate with a University of Manchester degree. 31 years later, over 1,000 students from the college have graduated with awards from this university. And we are encouraged to see the links between the college and the university continuing to develop and flourish. And I'm particularly gratified to see so many students graduating with the PhD. It's a pleasure to celebrate with all graduates here today in the beautiful setting of the Whitworth Hall. So to all of you receiving your degrees today, many congratulations on behalf of the University of Manchester. Thank you. 
I'm Professor Law and Dr. Ray, thank you for these words. It is indeed a joy to see before us this group of students and we celebrate their achievements. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors and upon the unanimous vote of the academic board of the college and the approval of the Senate of the University of Manchester, I hereby confer upon you these awards. The candidates can now be seated. Would the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy please stand and proceed to the platform? It's a tradition that, wherever possible, the supervisors of each PhD student are invited to participate in the hooding ceremony. I'm going to invite the first two of those to, to stand and move out, uh, Dr. Brower and uh, Dr. Wee. Uh, it, it's actually 50 years ago this year that Dr. Brower arrived both at what was then British Isles Nazarene College, and at the University of Manchester, one of the final students of F.F. F. Bruce. And so he's been heavily involved in working with PhD students, including supervising the very first of those, and the first of those to process today. So it's a delight to have him involved in hooding the PhD students. Dr. Brower Latz, Professor Law, on behalf of the Senate of the University of Manchester, I present to you for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Joseph Anthony Brennan. Ignacio Fernando Queiroz Carvalho. Sebegnon Mathieu Nosu. Scott Savage. James Sedlicek.
Crawford Michael Stevener. Colleen Carol Burgess Weaver. Would the candidates for the degrees of Master and Postgraduate Diploma please stand, make your way out of your rows and proceed to the platform. If, if you line up down there, yeah, then the others can join you. Dr. Brower Latz, Professor Law, on behalf of the Senate of the University of Manchester, I present to you for the degree of Master of Arts in Theology, Hans Thomas Nyman. Tina Michelle Wolf. For the degree of Master of Arts in Theology, Asian Christianity, Ben Hokma Chi Heng Law. For the degree of Master of Arts in Theology, Biblical Studies, Elizabeth Louise Belshaw. Joseph Asher Boston.
Lei Ji Lan. Akash Shrestha. For the degree of Master of Arts in Theology, Christian Holiness, Michael David Johnson. For the degree of Master of Arts in Theology, Community Development and Social Change, Beth Melanie Jody Ford. Anne McGrichen. Murdo McTeer. For the degree of Master of Arts in Theology, Global Mission and Culture, Daniel Marvin. For the degree of Master of Arts in Theology, Humanitarian Development and Social Justice, Stacey Cordery. Jessica Ellen Cray.
Alistair Rooms. Sharon Tiga. Nastia Trotter. For the degree of Master of Arts in Theology, Practical and Pastoral Theology, Annabel Magdeburg de Jong. For the degree of Master of Arts in Theology, Transforming Leadership, George Herrera. Stefan Cornelius Overden. For the degree of Master of Arts in Theology, Urban Mission, Sydney Brickell Jones. For the degree of postgraduate diploma in theology, community development and social change, Brandy Myers. For the degree of postgraduate diploma in theology, practical and pastoral theology, Ebrofio Blessed Orieka. For the degree of postgraduate certificate in theology, practical and pastoral theology, 
Daryl Paul Gidharry. Would the candidates for degree of Bachelor of Arts please stand and make your way to the steps to prepare for graduation. Dr. Brower Latz, Professor Law. On behalf of the Senate of the University of Manchester, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Honours with Theology, Daniel Joseph Cronin. Dennis Haywood. Who Edward Jones? Ryan Paul Kilbride. So Jung Kim. Anik Mao. Terry Lee Whit Richardson.
Jeffrey War. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Biblical Studies, Elizabeth Daswani. Degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Practical Theology, David Allen. Graham Dunwell. Pedro Enrique Martins de Freitas. Eme Kalu Uche. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Theology, Youth and Community, Bethany Ellis. Would the candidates for diplomas and certificates please stand and proceed to the front. For the certificate of in theology, Bernard Ofori Asare. Mm -hmm. 
Ebenezer Diacola Oyewo. Janet Margaret Wood. <laughs> These are the graduates of 2023. I commend them to you. Isn't it just wonderful to be a part of such a joyful moment in the lives of so many? Congratulations to you all. Uh, following this service, we invite you, every one of you, back to the college for a reception, which will run from, well, whenever you get there until about half past three. But come and join us to share a cup of tea, a light lunch. It's a beautiful place to take pictures in. Um, all of the faculty and staff are there, and you can at least say a final farewell to us. There are other events to remind you of. Our 80th year uh, graduation will be next year, October, on Saturday, October the 26th. And so if you're somebody who comes every year just for the sheer joy of it, then mark your card. And of course, for those of you who are going on to do master's degrees, come back next year. Thank you so much again for coming today. Please stand with me. Our final act will be to sing the doxology together. Congratulations to our new graduates on behalf of all the Board of Governors. Uh, we've prayed for you these past few years and we've heard some of your stories and we're just full of joy uh, to see you graduate today. So let's close this service in prayer. Lord, we celebrate your presence with us today for the joy and love expressed between students and teachers. Thank you for this opportunity to celebrate, a time to mark the achievements of our students. Lord, we pray for our new graduates. May they now go out into the world to preach your love, truth, and justice. Lord, we thank you for our teachers and faculty who made all this possible. May they be encouraged today. Bless and equip them for the new session ahead. Lord, we also thank you for our staff and volunteers who so faithfully support our students and campus. And Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen.
Interviews at other colleges I'd had were very formal. It kind of almost felt like I was just going to be another student in their number. But when I spoke to Heidi and Kirsty here, they seemed really interested in me as a person, as well as like me finding out about their course. If you want to be challenged and shaped theologically, if you want to grow in your faith and your understanding of who God is, um, then I'd highly recommend doing some theological study here at NTC. The way I started is not how I am today, which is something I achieved here at the NTC. The, the academic side of the course really, really uh, scared me at first, but each step was taken with the support of staff, which I found really encouraging. The lectures I found amazing, though they challenged many of my preconceived ideas and completely took me out of my comfort zone. I'm in my 40s and uh, I just fit right in, felt really comfortable, uh, I felt really welcome here. There was really um, a sense of care and uh, people really cared for each other. And I just felt so at home the minute I walked onto campus. An NTC has really changed my life for the best. The moment we arrived, people were telling us how glad they were that we had come and making us feel welcome. We worship together, when, especially when we are in the chapel. We sit together and like we look like one family. Heidi Wright, the first term especially, ringing her up in tears because I'd just been so ill and she just sorted it all out and she was just like an angel, she just came at the right time. It was the first place that I looked at that all the module options, I was genuinely like very happy to do any of those um, and was sort of like they all seem really interesting and I would find it hard to pick between them so I wanted to do them all. It's a really supportive space where they are willing to work with you wherever you're coming in at and everyone genuinely wants the best for you. One of the things that I loved here is there's so much freedom to explore aspects of the faith that particularly intrigue you. Was I'd get to study with, alongside friends um, and then I'd get to come back to work and kind of apply what I'd learned straight away. One of the things they were talking about here is that uh, if you don't have a PhD, then you can't teach in university. So I thank God for NTC and for helping me acquire my, my PhD. And they told me about NTC. They spoke very highly about this place and rightly so. Now that I've been here for a year, I know why. And I guess I was able to finish my degree with the help of the scholarship that this college provides. And yeah, I will be graduating next month. <laughs> NTC is uh, very much uh, values uh, like a spirituality. This is not just like a secular college or a university. They try to uh, equip us uh, like a holistic way. Teachers here, I think they always give a double portion in return, which is one of the most special things about this place is the, the staff. It is hugely enriching. Uh, it's fun and yet rigorous in its academic learning and has helped my practice as well in terms of everything that I'm able to do and how I'm able to serve and adapt my learning and, and practice. College equips us to do ministry in the world and not just in the church on a Sunday morning. I think I've been able to work cross-denominational, cross-faith and uh, across the world with different people. And I think having those strong basic foundations of where my faith lies and my theology lies, I think it's been helpful to engage with other people.